Welcome to the shooting show. This week, we're with Napier's Steve Rowe on the hunt for the elusive Muntjac. Plus, we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Stalking inventor Steve Rowe from Napier is back out in the field and is keen to show us his method for performing a suspended gralic using his invention, the Napier Tree Hugger. Steve's tree hugger device can handle most species of deer, but today we'll be targeting the diminutive muntjac. Though this alien species can be locally very common, they're not always easy to stalk. We're opting for a high seat vigil to give us the best possible chance. Early signs are promising with plenty of wildlife in abundance and Keeper Jeff has given us the most productive high seat on the estate. Sticking to the plan, we ascend to our chosen vantage point and await the muntjac. Inventor Steve has an eye for a useful bit of kit and he's a big fan of the flare thermal imager when stalking. It'll show up deer that normally wouldn't be visible behind cover and if you've taken a shot at last light it makes carcass location and retrieval easy too. As it is, there's plenty of wildlife that can be spotted with or without the flare. Firstly, an abundance of squirrels and pheasants, and a trio of fallow deer that appear in the ride. Steve takes a second look, but they aren't the intended quarry for today, and crucially, they're just slightly out of range. The minutes tick into hours. We've seen all sorts of wildlife but no muntjac. But suddenly our look changes as a pair emerge from the foliage, just too far away for a shot. And the wait continues. The munties make their way on without offering a shot, but then one reappears closer up. It's not stopping to offer a shot though, and soon heads back behind cover. It's a perfect day for the task at hand, and we've had virtually everything except the one shot at a muntjac we need. 
For a few minutes more, the woods return to silence. Then we spot the munters again. This time one hangs around just long enough to come into range. Just walking through there, just a month back. Bloody back to us now. Yeah. Could have shot him a second ago. You want him? After a long wait, this could be it. Ready? He's straight down. They say muntjac are overrunning the countryside, but they were certainly elusive enough today. For Steve's hard work, he finally gets the chance to show us how his tree hugger works. With plenty of rides in this section of the forestry, we can bring the pickup close in. But the tree hugger works even if you're miles away from the vehicle. With death confirmed and the carcass ready to process, Steve can finally give us his Gralican demo. Right, well having got it on the tree, obviously we're going to Gralic it in your own preferred method. I've got my way, everybody's got their own. I like to open up the stomach, bleed it first of course obviously, as it's nice and vertical that's very easy. Take out the green pluck and by taking out and tying a knot on the uh, the, the final end of the tract, it means that there's no faeces going to run down into the, into the animal at all because the lower end has been pulled out of the carcass and the little bit that's left in attached to the anus has got a knot in it. So again, nothing can leak out from there. Then we just bring the whole of the animal down and I, with a small animal like this, use a sturdy knife and instead of using a saw, just push straight through the ribs. You can do it on a row as well, it's quite easy. Much easier on a suspend like this because you can get a lot of pressure without pulling it. If it was on the ground you'd be pushing the animal away from you and that's not all so easy and it's not even so safe either. But once it's through I then carry on and take it straight out through the neck and then remove the whole of the esophagus and the head in one go. So again there is no leakage of any stomach contents into the carcass at all. We've gone from stomach to tongue in one piece, on the ground, away from the carcass, which let's face it, at this stage has now becomes food and it should be treated like food now. From this point onwards it shouldn't really hit the ground and it should be handled hygienically and chilled as quickly as possible. Steve there sharing his success and showing us his latest innovation. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. The UK Game Fair has announced a joint venture with Sporting Rifle magazine to make Stoneley the place to be for fox shooters this summer. With its own dedicated area at the show, Focus on Foxing will offer showgoers access to some of the best-known foxes in the UK, comprising a combination of scheduled talks and face-to-face -face question and answer sessions. With a host of foxing-themed exhibitors already confirmed, including Thomas Jacks, Scott Country, Rothercom, Starlight MV and Best Fox School, the UK Game Fair looks like the premium event for foxes this summer. Keep up with all your Game Fair news at ukgamefair.com. If you've got a working dog, you should make your views known on tail docking. The Scottish Government is asking for opinions on allowing vets to dock the tails of working spaniels and HPR dogs, and Basque is urging shooters to get involved. Director of Basque Scotland Colin Shedden said this is a huge opportunity to address a real animal welfare issue for working dogs in Scotland. 
The consultation runs until the 3rd of May. Head to the Basque website for details on how to contribute. Countryfile adopting a pro-shooting stance? It seems unbelievable, but maybe it's likelier than you think. The BBC programme, watched by more than 8 million, aired a segment on gamekeeping students from Easton and Otley College, putting shooting sports in a broadly positive light and clearing up misconceptions about gamekeepers. Despite getting angry comments from aunties on social media, the programme was well received overall. It doesn't look like Countryfile Live will be welcoming shooting this summer though. The event at Blenheim Palace this August still has no plans to have a gunmaker's row. You've got just a few days left to submit your results to the GWCT's Farmland Bird Count. Submissions close this Friday for anyone who has counted birds on their land, and entrants could win a pair of Swarovski SLC binos. Counting took place from the 6th to the 14th of this month. This is the third year a major count has taken place. And finally, 11 years after the Hunting Act came into force, Countryside Alliance Chief Executive Tim Bonner has labelled it a stain on our democracy. Writing online, he said the debate on hunting was never really about foxes, hounds or managing wildlife. Instead, it was about class war. He said the main reason it had been so strongly opposed was the prejudice and bigotry that led to its formation. The government still says it has committed to a free vote on repealing the ban. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. Sure.